Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Metal Gear 2 Solid Snake. In the last part we got here to the arsenal and now we're gonna head up here. Well that's suspenseful. A guest? Haven't had a guest in a long time. You've arrived at a good time, I was just going for a run. I'm Running Man, the fastest mercenary in the world. Watch. Am I supposed to be impressed by this? Because I'm not. See? Fast, huh? Let's move on to the main part. Hear the tone? It's nerve gas. If you beat me before the gas gets you, you'll survive. A race against time. Let's go. And he's telling the truth about the gas, so your oxygen meter does show up here, so get the gas mask on. Though you can actually leave the rooms that the gas is in, uh, back south to where I was when I started the part, actually. And you'll be able to come back in and have your oxygen meter replenished. Either way, the Running Man is a very easy boss fight, actually. All he tries to do is stay two rooms ahead of you at most. And if you place mines in the uh, corridors in between rooms, he's more than likely going to run into it, especially in the, the one on the right side there, between the top right and bottom right rooms. Uh, ten mines and he'll go down, so he's not a very long boss fight either. It's just a war of attrition more so than anything. If you do it right, you shouldn't even get hit. Hopefully the joke that I was trying to make with his voice came through, though, because I can't do a good Jason Griffith. Or Roger Craig Smith, and he's dead. And looking kind of toasty by the looks of it as well. My fastest turned against me? What's your name? Snake. Solid Snake. Snake? A cheetah defeated by a snake? Why? Race to death, maybe? That was a terrible wall. Why did you explode? I'm getting Snake Eater flash forwards, actually. Either way, for beating him, we get ID3. So now we can open more doors! And I'm actually gonna do a little jump cut there to collect the mines I'd already placed down. Either way, now that we have key card number three, we can head into this door on the right. So let's check this out, shall we? And in here we got some more kids. I really, really hate men with guns. Then I should probably be walking away. There were a lot of missiles here some time ago, but they moved them to a factory at west side of the first floor. God, that grammar. Thanks, fan translators. Uh, either way, what that kid's talking about is that they actually moved it back to the Zanzibar building, the main building that we've been at through most of the game so far. So I'm actually gonna exit the arsenal and head back to the build to the room that we used to enter the jungle. Which, for those who don't remember, as soon as the loading time finishes, is right... here. Actually, just now real- I'm kind of now realizing that's technically a load time on a cartridge-based system. Hmm. Mind you, on a PC it's more understandable. But not Street Fighter Alpha whatever it was on the Super Nintendo. God, that was bad. Either way, you're gonna see that camera there. Don't rush it here. I recommend you hug the right walls, all things considered. Well, in, uh, in comparison to the left wall. Because first off, it's how you can get past this camera easily. But also because on the right side of this pathway, uh, there's less resistance. Uh, two enemies at the most, and even then, they'll generally stay away from you. And there's also handgun ammo here too, which, you know, all the better. Well, I keep on calling it handgun ammo, but I think it's technically an ammo pack that replenishes most of your ammo. If I'm, if I'm remembering Metal Gear 1 logic correctly, at least. And in here we get... Stinger Missiles. These are the missiles that kid was talking about, and they are gonna come in so handy later on. And, wow, that was actually a flawless music transition. Good, good job there, Jump Cutting. You worked well for once. And now we're back on the other side, where the Green Beret guy we met, we followed last part and started. And we want to head back into the main Zanzibar building part for a few moments. Why? Because of what's behind door number three here. Well, it's not door number three, but you, you guys get the reference, hopefully. Either way, once we enter this room, we get something pretty cool. 
This is the red ID. You might be wondering what that does. Well, let's check our inventory. You're going to notice one through three are missing. That's because the red ID is all three cards in one. Until solid, this is the closest we're gonna get to hierarchy cards. And I love this in comparison to the last few games. Oh God, yes. Either way, we're back in that desert we were in last part, because you might remember I mentioned this white triangle up here is the third boss. So let's face it now that we have the Stinger Missiles, and that is a Hein DMI-24 helicopter. Great. Either way, you're gonna want to approach this boss fight from the right side of the screen. Why? Because he starts on the left, and because of this, he actually can't hit you. The Stinger is actually the weapon you need to use to fight this guy. Four shots in with it and he's down. But you're gonna notice you actually aim with the radar. You have to try and get him close to the center of the aiming reticule. This is actually a really cool weapon idea, and honestly, I quite like him. It makes this boss fight hella easy, that's for certain. And he's dead. Now remember that. Hind D's clearly take four missiles from this series now. Remember that when we get to the next game. Well, not the next game. Two games from now. Because next game is not solid, it is Ghost Babel. Well, in terms of the marathon. Hello there. You can disguise yourself as some luggage. Use your old favorite, the cardboard box. From now on, contact me at 140.66. Over. Random time to change your codec frequency, but okay! And also a bit of a random time to bring up the cardboard box. Might be wondering why he brought that up. Guess what's in this truck? You're never gonna get it. Never gonna get it. And here we get our good old friend, the cardboard box, or just box. Like in the previous games, if you walk around in this thing, enemies won't notice you if you stay still. Though I think this time they'll get a, get a bit curious if they see you in, in, a, in a conspicuous spot. Though I don't think that was started until possibly solid. Don't quote me on that, though. I rarely use the cardboard box in this game. I'll be honest. Either way, welcome to the tower building. This place is tall. 30 floors, in fact. Also, in here we got some rations. Oh, hi, Holly. Snake, I was discovered and caught. Help! I succeeded in contact Dr. Marv, then this happened. Where? Your location? Don't know, I was blindfolded. Tower building, I guess. Yes! Snake, the noises. From the left, an elevator. A pump-like noise from the right. From form behind, sounds like water streaming. Water, pump, elevator. I've got a sound map now. They failed to notice my wireless, but hurry! I think my snake voice is slowly dying, which is gonna suck, because Ghost Babel has so much dialogue in it I have to do. Either way, this area is a bit weird, because it's shaped like a spiral, uh, with various elevators littered throughout that take you to various floors. Uh, though the one in the middle is the one that takes you up to the top floor. I, I can tell you that much off the top of my head. But where we want to go is actually the elevator we just saw on the previous screen on the lower end, which is about halfway through the spiral. Also, these guards have probably one of the weirdest patterns ever. They're consistently walking in a spiral to the center for some reason. And as long as you don't step on the grates, they'll never really notice you. Though uh, somewhere in one of the pits that you can crawl into in this room, there's like a ration B3 or something. I don't know. One of the rations. And yeah, there's actually multiple ration types in this game, if you haven't noticed it by now. I think they heal various amounts and have various uses. I forget the exact reasoning. Either way, we want to head down to Beef 1. And have another loading screen. Now, at least these load times are short, unlike a certain 2006 released Sonic game. That I don't really care to mention. Either way, we want to head to these rooms for stuff, because here we got some ammo packs, which is always good. But in the next room especially you want to head into, because we get a very familiar item. The Plastic Explosives. Or C4. This game works a bit differently than it did in the previous games. In the previous games, they had a timer. In this game, you have to place them with space. Well, first off, hey, are you a friend of that blonde girl? And then blow them up with your primary attack button. Hello there, child. 
One-eyed uncle told me to watch for a man wearing green. I'm not wearing green. What are you talking about? I have to tell him about something. One-eyed uncle, huh? Gee. I wonder who that is. Hey, wait a second. That's an elevator. There's water in front and behind us. There's a pump sound as well going from the left or so. And this wall sounds different than the others. Guess where that guess who that white dot is on the right side of the radar? If you guessed Holly, you're 100% correct, actually. Hello there, Holly. Thanks for your help, Snake. What's the matter? Nothing. I just didn't know you were so beautiful. Oh, unlike your imagination? We should have met earlier. What about Dr. Marv? It seems he's safe. Seems? I thought you told me you contacted him. Well, I haven't met him. He's detained somewhere. He's released a carrier pigeon. It may be carrying some kind of clue. If clue, rather. A pigeon? Where is it now? I found it, but it escaped at the last moment. It flew up the elevator shaft. To the rooftop? Perhaps. The soldiers are searching for it as well. You should catch it first. It's our only clue to find Dr. Marv. A pigeon search? What are you going to do? I don't want to be a burden, and I want to collect more information as well. My value is going down these days. Hey, don't go too far. I don't want to be tapped, so I changed my frequency to 140.76. Here, I copied a card. Card 4. Use it wisely. Bye, Snake. See you later. Holly! What? We both live dangerous lives. It's not certain that we'll see each other again. Then what should we say? We can always meet if we're alive. Okay. Goodbye, and be careful. And with that, I'm actually going to cut back to this screen that we were on earlier because I want to head up this elevator. But yeah, how about that? An actual cutscene! Huh. Yeah, it's around here that Kojima's writing style started to kind of shine. Uh, we'll see that especially with some of the villain talks later on in this game. Well, there's that and the fact that this is actually attempting to have some amount of character, unlike Metal Gear 1 and Metal Gear 1 and Snake's Revenge, which was just flat military action. If they buried the doorways here, if you hit the wall where they used to be, you can hear where they used to be, rather. And this is more of the same that we just did. If you punch certain walls, they'll sound different, and you can punch, blow those walls up with plastic explosives. Though, if I recall collect, uh, collectly, correctly, uh, Solid is one of the last games to do this consistently. Because uh, I don't remember doing it at all in, uh, Sol in uh, Sons of Liberty. It's been a while since I last played Snake Eater, so I don't remember that game too well. And Guns of the Patriots was a bit too actionized. I saw a lot of green pineapples in the room south of here. Gee, I wonder what shaped like a pineapple and is green in war. And I'm thinking back, uh, even though I'm so close to platinuming 5, uh, I forget if there's actually any bumble walls in that one. I know you can use C4, and it's one of the preferable ways to take out some uh, armored vehicles, but... Hmm. Speaking of platinuming... I finally platinum Final Fantasy X HD. Took around 180 something hours, but I did it. And now I never have to play that game again until I eventually do a let's play of it. Yay! Seriously though, that takes forever. If I have to do the post game stuff, I'm just gonna reload my old save files. Because stat maxing is ridiculous! Either way, let's head here for a pretty good supply area. Ration, some plastic explosives, and some ammo. I don't think you can particularly spam that room, but still. One-eyed uncle is a kind father to us. He hates grown-ups. Huh. That's a weird thing that they... I, they rarely ever bring up about the character they're talking about. And here we get our green pineapples. Grenades! You're going to need these against the next boss, so grab them now. And now we're back in this room near this other elevator. But this time, I want to head to the center of the spiral. I think the rations, by the way, that you can get somewhere in these areas are either in this pit, that pit, or the next one. 
I know there's a ration in one of those little crawl holes. Actually, now that I think about it, it might be that one right there. Huh. Well, either way. We want to get into this elevator and climb it all the way up to floor 30. Which, yes, they do actually show us going through every particular floor. I didn't expect that kind of realism in Metal Gear. Well, at least it's faster than a normal elevator, because it would take us like six minutes just to get up three floors. And we're finally there. Get your grenades in a rash now, by the way. What the? What's this? A trap? Exactly! It's a trap to catch a fox alive, Foxhounder! What kind of waddling animation? I'm Red Blaster! I'll cook you slowly with my grenades! And I'm actually gonna fast forward this fight because it's really simple and really easy. As long as you maintain the pattern I'm doing with dodging his grenades, you should rarely ever get touched. 25 grenades to his face will take him out, and it's honestly nothing too bad. The only thing you have to really look out for is that his air grenades have a surprisingly long-lasting area of effect. Beyond that, though, not a very hard boss. In fact, the past three have been surprisingly easy. You'd think the Hind D would be harder than a guy with just hand grenades, but no. And with that, we're just going to rub against these traps in order to get past them. It's actually a surprisingly ineffective trap. I think you can actually move on to this room before killing the boss, even. And with that, and me narrowly avoiding a pitfall, I'm going to need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part four, we'll be ch hopefully finding the carrier pigeon and seeing what we have to do after that. See you guys then.